My name is Father Dan Canberra. I'm a Marian of the Immaculate Conception. The religious community that operates the National Shrine of Divine Mercy here in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And today I'd like to speak to you about the patron saint of shoppers. You know, in the Catholic Church, we have a tradition that for every category of human endeavor, there is a patron saint. And sometimes it almost seems odd whom the church selects as a patron saint. But in the case of St. Louis, the King of France, he might make a little bit more sense than many of the others. St. Louis, when he was a young boy, sometime before puberty, kneeling at his mother's feet with his hands on her lap, looked her straight in the eye and said to her, I'm going to pray that I never commit a mortal sin ever in my life. Blessed Blanche, his mother, remembered that event and recorded it and spoke about it freely with members of the court because she felt that it was important that everyone in the royal court know that her son, the King of France, desired with all his heart to please God first and foremost. When he became the King of France, he and his wife had 11 children, and each of their children, to some measure, are considered saints in the church as well, either as servants of God or as blesseds. And certainly, Louis was an extraordinarily saintly king. Although he went into battle, and very often was the custom of the day, that the kings who went into battle, especially in the Crusades, took with them, shall we call them nicely, concubines. This was not the case for Louis. He did not allow them for his royal court as they went into battle, nor did he recommend them in any way. He felt that it was important that each of his soldiers be first and foremost soldiers of Christ who dedicated their manhood to Christ and to doing the will of our Heavenly Father. After his death, his close friend and constant companion reported concerning King Louis that he never saw anything in his life that even vaguely gave any notion of a mortal sin. King Louis was especially concerned to avoid scandal and to set an example for his followers in his kingdom. Every document he signed, he signed as Louis of Poissy. And when asked about that, he said, I have more love and respect for the chapel in Poise where I was baptized than for, the king, than for the cathedral where I was crowned king. Because in the chapel where I was baptized, I became an adopted son of the church and of our heavenly father, a title that bears with it greater dignity than any dignity the earth can handle or grant me. In his crusades, he brought home with him the crown of thorns. And it was precisely for having captured and brought home the crown of thorns that he's considered one of the wisest of all shoppers because he was willing to make whatever sacrifices were necessary to obtain this most sacred relic. And back in France, he built Saint-Chapelle, a church in which to contain this most precious of relics. Each time some member of the royal family got married, he would give them one of the thorns from the crown of thorns as a wedding gift and would say to them upon receiving the gift that they had received the reminder 
that marriage was meant to be a sacrifice, a sacrifice of oneself for one's spouse and for one's children, and most of all, for the greater glory of God, that the purpose of marriage was not one's own gratification, but it was for the gratification of God and His glory to be proclaimed and to be made manifest in the home, in the domestic church, in the circle of love that was created by a father and mother caring and concerned for their children and their children's children. St. Louis, the King of France, was certainly a man of deep and profound prayer. Wherever the Eucharist was within his camp was where he faced at night when he prayed his evening prayers. And each morning he sought out the chaplain who would celebrate mass for the King of France and for all of his troops. And always receiving Holy Communion in the most devout manner possible, he asked for the grace to love God more with each passing day of his life until finally he was received into his heavenly glory. St. Louis of France is not just an example for leaders, he's an example for fathers, he's an example for husbands. He is an example for those of us who shop, mindful of the fact that whatever we're buying, we should be doing so for the sake of growing in holiness that whatever things that we have, whatever possessions we keep, should be for the magnification of our souls and not for their detriment. They cannot become something that distracts us from God, but rather something that prepares us for the heavenly glory that we've been called to by our baptism. May God bless you and all those whom you love.